It is a never-ending battle capitalism wages against our ability and more generally our desire to change anything that it sees as profitable. All the time we are bombarded with images, words, and film, propaganda essentially to push us towards an action. By an action, I mean killing our desire to do anything or our belief that we can do anything. Constantly, they bombard us with the ideology of selfishness. Get what you can for yourself. Everywhere you turn in the media or the education system itself, there's something or other telling you to compete in order to survive. Because logically, there's no other choice, right? However, there's some things they cannot propagandize us away from. Horrors and inhumanities that even the most cynical opponents of radical change, or real change more specifically, cannot turn away from. There are events unfolding in our world that are so bad we cannot simply look away from and return to our daily lives without thinking about them. It is these events or conditions of human life more precisely that the ruling elite, the capitalist class, have the most difficulty getting us not to pay attention to. Think for a moment of war orphans. This brings images of little Afghan children with missing limbs or people, mostly children, digging through trash and dumpsters on the street looking for food or something to sell. We also see a single parent, usually a mother, molding some kind of food like corn or wheat staple on some kind of plate, usually made out of wood, desperately trying to make something to eat for her fatherless children. These are images that we cannot look away from. Maybe we can change the channel and try to take our minds off it by watching orange-faced orange -faced buffoons behave like children on Jersey Shore or something like that. But really, it doesn't work. We always know these children, these people, are suffering every single day. But many people before we are born and many after we die. These images cannot be removed or ignored because they offend our sense of morality and common sense of human connection too much. These are the effects of capitalism that the elite use charity as a placebo against real action. It doesn't require too much investigation to realize that all the horrors people suffer in the third world are a result of capitalism, or imperialism more generally. The lack of food because of disorganized individualist production, lack of education from a lack of schools because no one can pay money for them, a lack of medical care because no one can pay for them, the sparseness of population in Africa due to slavery, etc. In direct propaganda, they will give us some free market excuse, say how trade is the only way out of these terrible conditions, while completely ignoring the fact that you can't have a viable trade if you have nothing to trade. Or that an illiterate person starving to death that doesn't understand what market trade is, at least in a national sense. Indirect propaganda, they will suggest even openly that people are suffering, are unwilling to work, or that are somehow inferior through some kind of underhanded social Darwinist expression. Maybe calling them stupid. They are stupid, which is why they are poor. This is generally the excuse given as to why somehow capitalism never brings up the third world, and in fact makes it worse. Usually these are only work on people who are openly or not openly racist. That's the greatness of capitalism. You can always pass off a racist belief as being objective. So being the clever fellows that the capitalist class are, they know you can never propagandize against every single inhumanity that they directly or indirectly cause. In these cases, most of which are third world suffering, they need to use some kind of pressure release valve. They need some kind of placebo which can make those who are not monsters think they are somehow contributing to the abolishment of such circumstances. They need this placebo so as not to let popular anger or sadness of these inhumanities be turned into popular resistance to capitalism itself. This is what charity in our really existing form is. It is a way of making us feel like we have done something when we in fact have done nothing productive. We see a child suffering on television and we are told that for the cost of a cup of coffee we can help change the child's life and make it better. Really what they are doing is offering us an easy way out of really getting involved in what is causing the problem. We tell ourselves, I'll give up a dollar and say I give up a, give up a coffee and make a child's life better. In reality, they've only affected one child's life in a very temporary way and we still have that cup of coffee regardless. The only thing that has changed is that now we feel as though we have done something to change the situation over there when we most certainly have not. 
the rampant poverty that causes these horrible conditions has not had even the smallest dent put in it. This then protects their interest in perpetuating the poverty all for the sake of collecting their profits. This concept of what I call bourgeois charity allows the capitalist class to take advantage of human nature and use it to protect their interests. Just about everyone in some way wants to do something about the suffering of children in the third world. However, we ourselves are limited by the number of hours in the day in which to do something. We are also limited by the constraints put on us by the capitalist system. We cannot simply just run off and help these people in whatever way we see fit. We have to survive day to day too, and that means showing up for work and being exploited as well. If we see that our inability to create change in such terrible conditions is hampered by the same thing that causes those conditions, then we'll come to the conclusion that the capitalist system has to go and make us because we're motivated to do so. This bourgeois charity allows us to feel as though we've done something, thus taking the pressure to do something real off of us and allow us to resume our sedentary consumerist lifestyle. Once donating money to causes or supporting a child in the third world, we no longer feel the desire to do something. In fact, we feel quite happy with ourselves and pat ourselves on the back for making a contribution regardless of how ineffective in the overall scheme it was. The bourgeoisie are happy to let us do this, even promote it. They get us to take the action of placating ourselves and dissuade us from meaningful radical action. It not only keeps the, keeps the capitalist in line, but also makes us pay for our own sedative against our own action. The bourgeois have lost nothing. They spent a cent and we get kept in line. On top of that, mostly charities are bourgeois owned and they make a profit of our generosity. Important here is to look up the difference between a non-profit organization and a not-for-profit organization. It's also why free market fundamentalist ideology like the Mises Institute and other phony libertarian organizations think giving to charity is such a better idea than using economics to actually help people. It maintains the wealth of the elite and the capitalist system while placating anyone among them who has a conscience and wants to do something. I'm not advocating that people stop giving to charity. I'm advocating that people think about why they are giving to charity and see if it is being, see if they're being placated in this phony form of action. I want to see that radical action against the capitalist system is actually going to turn the world, the tide of human misery around. Take Venezuela, for example. It is no longer classified as a third world country. It is a developing country or second world now. This has only happened as a result of socialist policy and leadership of Hugo Chavez. Venezuela has been a capitalist country and, the so and things only got worse, no matter how much people in the first world donated to them. Only when they took radical action against the capitalist system did they see any improvement. I'm not saying give up charity. I'm saying commit to radical action and charity if you can. Radical action is the only way out of poverty.